Thank you all so much for coming. It's heartwarming to see so many friends and supporters of the University of Michigan and Michigan Medicine come together on this very important day. I'd especially like to welcome the university's regents, many of whom are sitting here on the front row and second row, uh, as well as uh, university executive officers and several elected officials, uh, including Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, who you all will hear more from in a few minutes, uh, Yusef Rabi, uh, Michigan State Representative, and Donna Lazinski, State Representative of the 52nd District, and several county commissioners. Thank you all for joining us. Today is a very exciting day for us, and it's an important milestone in a long journey. A number of years ago, we began to envision the future and how we would stay on the cutting edge of healthcare in order to provide our patients the most comprehensive care to many of the most complicated uh, patients that, are, that come to our health system. And after a huge amount of work, amount of research, planning, and dialogue, Today, we're embarking on the next phase of this project, breaking ground and beginning site work and construction. I'd like to take a moment to reflect on the planning process that brought us here to where we are today. With the help of our architect and engineering partners, many in the Michigan medicine community participated in multiple robust planning sessions. This included our providers of care, uh, for our patients. It included support staff. It included administrators, patient, and family advisors. Everyone came together with one goal in mind, to envision and design the hospital of the future that will transform how we provide complex care. This entire process was an excellent reflection of the spirit of Michigan, where we collaborate, where we bring the best ideas forward to problem solve and to find solutions. I'd also like to thank all of you, many of whom are in the audience, um, who participated and supported this process. <laughs> Today's event commemorates all that work and effort and celebrates what we anticipate to be the next generation of the highest caliber of care for our community. It's even more uh, incredible that we commence this project the very same year that we celebrate the 150th anniversary of University Hospital. December marks our century and a half milestone, a perfect time uh, that we begin preparing for our next century of advanced patient care, education, and research. You'll hear from a number of different leaders today who can provide their unique perspective on how the hospital of the future will transform our ability to care for patients and their families. Now I'd like to introduce the University of Michigan President, Dr. Mark Schlissel. Uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you, uh, Marshall, for the kind introduction, but more importantly, for your outstanding leadership of Michigan Medicine. Uh, I also want to thank everyone in the Michigan family and beyond who's helped make today possible. Of course, we would not be here for this historic day without the commitment of the University of Michigan Board of Regents. Many of them are here today, but I'll read all their names. Uh, Jordan Acker from Huntington Woods, Mike Beam from Grand Blanc, Mark Bernstein from Ann Arbor, Paul Brown from Ann Arbor, Shauna Ryder Diggs from Gross Point, Denise Illich from Bingham Farms, Ron Weiser from Ann Arbor, and Kathy White from Ann Arbor. Let's give the Board of Regents a round of applause. As Dr. Rungi said, 150 years ago in 1869, U of M established the nation's first hospital owned and operated by a university. It was a historic and important moment, not just for Michigan, but for the future of healthcare. It had 20 beds, no wards or operating suites, and was located in the residence of a former professor. Since then, that was probably less expensive though, <laughs> Since then, we've pioneered how physicians, nurses, and other healthcare professionals are trained. We launch programs, departments, and centers that are first of their kind anywhere in areas that include human genetics, dermatology, and depression. We've been recognized at top levels for patient safety, 
nursing excellence, and as a workplace amongst many of our honors. University of Michigan hospitals have always helped lead the way in advancing all parts of our public mission. We teach future generations of healthcare practitioners and leaders. We serve the public here in Michigan and around the world as we heal. We drive the cadence of human progress through the commitment to discovery at the highest levels. Now, a century and a half after the first U of M hospital, we're advancing our life-saving work through this new project. Its state-of-the-art facilities will give our outstanding team of healthcare professionals the ability to respond very quickly to complex needs and changes in a patient's condition. It's a project that is crucial for our state, our university, and the millions of people throughout the area who rely on us for quality, advanced healthcare. And it's another historic moment for our university as we will transform patient care for Michiganders. Thank you all very much. It's my pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Board of Regents, Regent Ron Weiser. Thank you, President Schlissel. I'm excited to be here on behalf of the Board of Regents as we celebrate another important milestone in the university's history. And I do want to tell you why this is so personal to me. I've had children born here. I've had grandchildren he born here. Some of their lives have been saved here. My life has been saved here. And I'm sure all of you have similar stories. So that's why it's so important to me. As a regent, donor, and patient, I often marvel at the ingenuity of our physicians, nurses, technicians, and other providers, and the impact they have on advancing health care to serve the state of Michigan and the world. To maintain our global leadership in medical practice and research, we must adapt to society's changing needs by increasing capacity to accommodate patients needing complex care and providing access to others, those who may not have other options. This project helps us demonstrate what is possible when experts work together as we stimulate discoveries and save lives. In September, my, bo my Regent Board colleagues and I unanimously approved the creation of this transformative, transformative hospital. We have been deeply involved throughout the entire process leaving, leading up to its historic moment. The new facility will serve as a resource for other hospitals around the globe. It will provide hundreds of construction jobs to, bo to boost the regional and state economy, and it will allow us to meet our state's current and future patient needs. I would like to commend Executive Vice President Marshall Runge for his outstanding leadership, as well as the instrumental guidance of the University of Michigan Health Systems Board and the Regents Health Affairs Committee, which is chaired by my colleague, Regent Shauna Ryder Diggs. Also, a special thanks to my co-chair, Regent Denise Illich. Thank you all for your dedication, hard work, and thoughtful counsel throughout this process. You have helped make this all possible. Also, a special thanks to all of those involved in shaping plans for this new hospital. Your vision, dedication, and commitment are key to the University of Michigan's future as a universal leader in medicine. We are proud to stand with you today at the forefront of innovation and look forward to all that lies ahead. Congratulations to all, and now I'd like to introduce Dave Spallinger, President of the U of M Health System. Thank you, Ron. So many of you know that for many years, Michigan Medicine has faced challenges with patient access. It's a daily struggle to meet the needs of hospitals who request transfers across the state. Our university hospital runs full, at full capacity on a daily basis, and operating on that level is stressful for everybody. It, with the new inpatient facility, we will improve not only in the environment for patients, but the environment in which our caregivers practice. Um, the additional rooms will give us the breathing room to renovate our semi-private rooms in University Hospital and eventually become all private rooms. We plan to add 264 rooms to the new facility, and those will all be private. The new facility, however, will take four years to build. And so during that time, we will need to continue to work with our partners across the state in order to enhance access for our patients across the state. 
In the future, our main medical campus will be positioned to serve the highest acuity, most complex patients from across the state. The caliber of care will be, that will be possible in four years will not be available anywhere else in the state of Michigan. So this is a very exciting time for us. We envision our future and how we will be a critical health care provider to better serve our communities and our partner health, health systems. At this time, I'd like to bring up Debbie Dingle to say a few words. Good afternoon, everybody. It's really gr I wasn't planning on speaking, so I'm honored to be here. I just I want to say a couple of things. I want to thank the entire leadership of the University of Michigan healthcare system from Marshall Runge, who does a great job, Dave, the doctors, the nurses, the researchers, the people that clean the forest, the people that clean the food. There is a team at the University of Michigan that cares about the patients and contributes to the work that's being done there every single day. And we need to thank them for getting us to where we are today. And President Schissel, who's a doctor himself, and the Board of Regents, who I know care deeply, their leadership, and really, and Ron Weiser, my wonderful Republican, nonpartisan American friend, you know, it's, that's what we're here today to celebrate. Healthcare is my passion. I don't think people realize the jewel that we have here at the University of Michigan and the breaking edge research that's being done here, the cutting edge research, and how it's not only helping people in the state of Michigan, but people throughout the world. And we need to make sure that that research continues because it's saving lives, extending lives, and vetting the medicine. I drive some of the doctors here nuts because how can I do public policy without their teaching me? I sit in that hospital. I know there's a bed shortage. I know there's a doctor shortage. I know there's a medicine shortage. I know there are lots of problems. But I know that there's a leadership team at the University of Michigan, and the groundbreaking today is going to put us on a path of addressing the shortage of beds, combining and bringing together people for that innovative research that we need. And today is another day on the journey that is going to keep this hospital at the forefront of innovation and technology and help patients in Michigan and in the world. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Congressman, Congresswoman Dingle. Uh, it's a little hard to follow that, um, but we're up to the task. Good afternoon. I'm Sean Dwyer. I'm the executive director for the University Hospital and Cardiovascular Center. When we refer uh, to this new facility as the hospital of the future, we really truly believe that it's going to be that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, this hospital will have the most advanced technologies available in its 12 floors, 20 operating rooms, and three interventional radiology suites. The space will allow us to offer an elevated level of care and more opportunities for our care teams to collaborate across different disciplines and functions. We anticipate that the primary services in the building, yes, will be neurosurgical and neurological care, cardiovascular care, advanced imaging, and other specialty services. We're so happy about that. Um, we are also really excited that it'll be connected to our cardiovascular center and that'll allow us to have seamless transitions for our staff and our patients and coordination across our care teams. One of the things we're really proud of and a unique design feature in the building, and I know if you've ever been in one of our current rooms, they're very small. And this building is going to have fantastic expanded family space. Can I get a yes for that? Um, we, you know, we really, we know and we take to heart patient family-centered care and we know that the loved ones um, and family members are an integral part of healthcare and around healing and recovery 
and they do need to be involved in the care planning. And as decisions are made, uh, sometimes difficult decisions that need the patient, the family, and the care team together. We also know um, from watching and listening to our highly valued patient and family advisors that they believe, and it's shown, that outcomes are typically better when surrounded by the people who love you, um, you get their support and their strength. So we were very intentional about designing a space that facilitates and supports the abilities for families to be involved in the patient care and with our care team. To the literally um, hundreds, and when I say hundreds, I mean hundreds of stakeholders that were involved in the design process. Our incredible nurses, our physicians, our techs, our therapists, our facilities and support people, our IT staff and faculty, our patients and families who gave of their time, who came in their wheelchairs and canes and all kinds of things to give us input our team of administrative folks who corralled all of those hundreds of people. We, we just say thank you, thank you, thank you for your hard work, your commitment to really create what is gonna be a spectacular hospital of the future. And with that, I would like to introduce Caitlin Wetzel. Come on, Caitlin. Caitlin is a patient who has experienced our neurosurgical our neurological and our um, radiation oncology services. And we're so thankful that you're here today to share your story with us and your willingness to get up in front of a group. You can do it. Yes. You're going to be great. So thank you very much. Thank you. You guys are a great crowd. You're going to make it easy. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Um, as a diehard Spartan fan, some people may have thought that this would be a hard engagement for me to speak at. On the contrary, I couldn't say yes fast enough. My Michigan Medicine teams have are, they're the best of what they do and they have truly become a part of my family. Uh, the term go blue has a new meaning at my home. And we have a little we have t-shirts so I think we have like magnets now <laughs> it's good uh, I'm happy to say that I am far past the average lifespan for my diagnosis statistics said I would last nine months but as my doctor Dr. Umamura told me statistics only matter after the fact and I am far from done fighting my team found and fought for me to receive treatment with an experimental drug awaiting approval from the FDA, numerous agencies, corporations and committees. They fought not just for Michigan medicine, but for me, and through me, for brain tumor patients across the country. Uh, the care and support my family and I have received with Michigan medicine has been unparalleled. I have friends who treat with other hospitals and it breaks my heart because they should be here and uh, breaking ground on this hospital of the future will allow more patients access to all-star comprehensive neurological care. I'm honored to be here today for many, many reasons not least of which is the fact that without the hard work and support of my Michigan Medicine family, I don't think I would be here today. I, I know I would not be here today. Thank you again, and I'm excited to see what the hospital will bring. Thank you, Caitlin, for sharing your powerful, powerful, impactful story with all of us, trusting our care teams to partner with you. You may have been a diehard Spartan, but now you're a loyal Wolverine. <laughs> so please give her another round of applause. <laughs> now, 
uh, it is many patient stories like Caitlin's that inspired us to dream. To dream about how we might provide enhanced and complex patient care in this new hospital. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Tony Denton. I'm Senior Vice President, Chief Operating Officer of the University of Michigan Health System. And I want to elaborate just a bit on our commitment to not only expanding access to world-class patient care, but also to facility design and construction principles, principles which reaffirm our longstanding legacy of environmental stewardship and sustainability. Our community commitment to managing a positive and healthy ecosystem through efficient energy use, recycling, reuse, and waste reduction has been recognized nationally for the last 16 years by Practice Green Health with a membership of 1,100 acute care hospitals. We are proud of that recognition. Our hospital of the future will be no different. Actually, we aim to raise the bar on new levels of environmental sustainability. We plan, we aim to seek gold, gold certification in the worldwide green building program, leadership in energy and environmental design, also known as LEAD. LEAD provides a framework which measures and recognizes an organization's commitment to building healthy and energy efficient facilities as a positive contribution to our environment. We are corporate citizens. Typically, LEAD Gold facilities consume 25% less energy, generate 34% lower greenhouse gas emissions than non-gold buildings. With our planned investment in energy efficient infrastructure, we project a significant reduction in energy costs per year. Components of the new hospital will also use materials with recycled content. What about the trees? We've heard many questions about the trees. We want you to know that most of these trees that currently surround you on this land will be carefully transplanted to various locations to beautify other spaces across our Ann Arbor campuses. And a late note for you to be aware, this is a waste-free event. So all your cups and paper will also be disposed of properly. Um, so thank you. Thank you so much. Now please join me in welcoming Dr. Karim Marasco, Julian T. Hoff Professor and Chair of the Department of Neurosurgery to say a few words. Speaking as I do for the faculty and staff that were part of this planning process, I can tell you we are really, really excited to be here today. It's been a long journey, but it's been one that has been with every single member of the institution participating in some way, either by supporting us or being present through these planning sessions. The entire facility, from the most advanced equipment to the individuals that will be participating in it, will have operating rooms that will be there for improvement in patient care. Rather than moving a patient from one location to another, the building is designed so that a patient can co-locate all of these specialties in one area. Each room in this hospital will be able to convert into an ICU bed if it's necessary. And we'll have the facility not only to do this, but also have the staff to be able to accomplish this. When it matters, uh, and when it's a matter of seconds, we'll be able to deliver that care in seconds. We'll also be able to advance new innovations. The ability to co-locate neurology, neurosurgery, radiology, pathology in one area will be extremely important. When you bring people together, new ideas are established. I foresee this facility will not only help us better care for patients, but it will also help us as an institution to advance science. One of the most important things that we can do is take care of patients. It's a sacred promise to each of us to do the best that we can. This facility will take care of not, care, not only you, but your children and your grandchildren. It's important, it's important for Michigan, and we hope with the things that we will invent, the things that we will develop, the things that we'll bring to fruition here, it'll also help the rest of the world. I can say that I am prouder today than I've ever been at the University of Michigan to see us advancing medicine, bringing us together for the hospital of the future. Thank you for being here, thank you for your support, and most of all, thank you to the future patients that we'll be able to take care of and it's the state-of-the-art facility. 